Right, hello and welcome back to Outside Xbox. You find us in the Outside Xbox drawing room uh, and we've just seen Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Uh, so guys, first impressions of the game? Pirates mostly was my impression of it because it's about pirates, Yeah, which is great. What do you guys make of that setting? I, I love it because I don't know if you played uh, the Peg Lake missions in Assassin's Creed 3, but they were basically you going around being a pirate in a big pirate ship. And they were great. They were my favourite parts of Assassin's Creed 3. So I'm hoping this is just a whole game of that, basically. Yeah, it feels like a shot in the arm for the series, especially after the uh, reception on, on 3, which some people, some people found... Um, <laughs> I liked 3. I know you liked <laughs> 3. Um, it was but a bit uh, dull. And this Regardless of whether you like it or not, this is a nice, you know, a nice uh, mm. sharp contrast. This is not. This is not like Brotherhood, where they've. It's the same time period, same character, and very similar setting. They've actually gone back in time. Mm. First time in the series, years but so. they've gone back in time. But they've they've given it a a number and a subtitle, which feels a bit like hedging their bets. Mm. So they're like, it's a sequel, but if it doesn't do very well, it's not really a sequel. So yeah. I don't know, if, uh, you've got a new protagonist, though, so I mean that's the kind of the most, the biggest change there. Because I think a, a lot of people's problems with Assassin's Creed Three was that Connor was really boring, whereas this new guy, he's just a drunk, angry pirate. Which you know, sounds yeah. great. the problem with uh, Kenway, it's Edward Kenway, is the new protagonist. I, I think might be not that he's, not that he's boring, but anti-heroes mm. are quite hard to do. Yeah. Uh, in that he's supposed to not be a fully good guy. Um, in fact, you, you yeah. spoke to um, was it uh, Jean? Jean. Yeah. Uh, of the um, of the development team about it, and he's not fully a good guy, uh, which makes him a sort of roguish, mm. roguish anti-hero, and, and that can be hard to do in a way that's also likable because by definition he can't be, can't be truly like. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know he can how be charismatic, I suppose. They they gave us like a design doc of um, all the things he was supposed to be, and one was handsome. <laughs> <laughs> he is yeah, handsome. He's pretty, pretty he's a good looking He's guy. the first blonde assassin, right? Mm, yeah. The first, first blonde assassin. And um, with the name like Kenway, he's Hatham's dad, mm. which means he's um, Connor's granddaddy. Yeah. I think well, the suggestion was that there was going to be some character development, so maybe at the start he's kind of a debaucherous I love piracy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, and then he discovers like, that this is hmm, not... Piracy, yeah, yeah. Not as good as it may well, be. He's, at the start of the game, he's not a pirate, he's a privateer, which is a, a different thing. Yeah, I d so, they didn't I mean, say how much... Tell us a history story. <laughs> no, oh, gosh, no, no, I, no. Well, well, they said he, that guy. He, worked, he worked for the Royal Navy and then he, he becomes seduced by, by piracy. I don't know how much of that you'll get to see, but given that the previous game allowed you to play the father of the main character for six hours, you've got to suspect there'll maybe be at least one mission where you're part of the Royal Navy and acting as a privateer. But yeah, he becomes uh, seduced by piracy. And the other really interesting thing is that They've said he's trained by assassins, but he's not an assassin, which is kind of interesting. Well, I think that he probably, he becomes an assassin mm. later in the game, but I don't know if you'll have access to things like Eagle Vision. Um, although that wasn't really, in Assassin's Creed 3, you used Eagle Vision maybe twice, and it was press L stick yeah. to use Eagle Did Vision. Did they say outright that he w wasn't an assassin? Yeah, at the start of the game he's not an assassin. He's, okay, mm. okay. But so I think he will become one, which makes kind of Haytham even more interesting because clearly his dad, was a was an assassin and his son became an assassin <laughs> but he's spoiler alert uh, not yeah. an assassin yeah. no but the the present day is a factor in this new yes. game i was wondering whether they'd just kind of leave it aside and yeah. it would become just but you're no. the new desmond yeah right right i'm i'm the new desmond andy's the new desmond but you're the new desmond well. but yeah. what about me what if i'm like, <laughs> the new desmond no, no. are you, you an assassin because no so i'm the, the only um, one wearing the outfit so i don't the, think you the guys the fictional premise is that you're at abstergo entertainment Right. Which is like the entertainment like spin-off <laughs> um, of, of the evil Templar organisation. Yeah, You've of got to evil diversify. corporation uh, Abstergo, and you're researching. They weren't clear on whether you're researching your ancestor, um, just, but you're, you're, you're doing some sort of historical research Edwin. with the uh, with the Animus, and you're researching Edward. Yeah, so mm. it looked like for, we were shown, I think, all of one sort of screenshot or artwork, and and it looked first person. Yeah. So I think that would be a really neat way to do it because then you don't need a character model. Mm. Yeah. And yeah, it's 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 fully immersive. They they said this is uh, a result of the fact that you know the timelines are now in sync. Like the real world is at the same point. They made a big this. deal about yeah. that. Yeah, we so, are now in the Assassin's yeah. Creed world. He was like, you're in the Assassin's Creed. Yeah, Assassin's yeah. Creed. Whether you like no it or not. escaping. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lock the doors. But <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I feel like that might still be a bit of a holding pattern before they bring in another protagonist. Another I don't. Desmond. I don't feel like yeah. we're going to see a lot of the ones who came before or whatever you want to call them. No. Um, the, the Juno, Minerva. Yeah, I mean, Desmond thing. was very specifically the convergence of all mm. these bloodlines, so unless everyone who plays the game is also that convergence, yeah. it kind of 
Yeah, so you guys have finished Assassin's mm. Creed 3 and yes. I haven't, so... Okay. So we'll, um, leave, we'll leave it there, but um, it's, 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 it's <laughs> interesting. Anyway, pirates. Right. Pirates. Well, so I'll talk about the map. Yeah, um, the big, large open world. Um, 50 locations. Yeah, 50 yep. locations. Fishing villages. 50. Right, let me list them. <laughs> okay, list all of the locations. Fishing villages. Fortresses, mm -hmm. coconut islands, coconut yeah. jungles, I think I like French pineapple islands. Perhaps. Yeah, I'd never heard the term coconut. Like, oh, island. coconut I mean, it's self-explanatory, <laughs> but they did say coconut island. There might be all the different kinds of fruit, like the yeah. fire islands, maybe. banana, banana islands. republic. <laughs> yeah. um, um, so jungles, Mayan temples, yep. um, hidden coves. Hidden coves. That's pretty cool. Uh, so it seemed like there would be a sort of a scattering of, of smaller, um, like fishing villages mm. and locations where you can go and um, repair your boat and and that kind of thing where there are side missions, like lesser side missions. But I guess the big story missions perhaps take place in like um, Kingston and Havana, Havana which yeah. is the main location, mm. the, or the main starting location, which they said would be very And European. Nassau as well, which is the pirate sort of right. pirate's enclave or yeah. whatever it is. New Providence, I want to say? Yes, I New learned Providence. a lot of history, I've got to tell you. <laughs> All right, right don't brag. <laughs> no, 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 I mean, in the Assassin's Creed presentation. Yes, of course, yeah, yeah. What year is it, Andy? <laughs> 1715. Right, thank you. So, the Who's the president? <laughs> <laughs> the, it's like the golden age of piracy, yeah? Right, right, exactly, which was about uh, like a 10 year period. So okay. it won't be maybe as decade spanning as some of the previous ones. That's cool. I'm, pre I'm prepared to deal with a slightly tighter focus, particularly because so much seemed to happen during that, that time period. And they've said, you know, there's going to be these big historical events like uh, the, the Spanish Armada and the, you know all this all this stuff that happened within that decade. So I think they're going to have plenty of material. Certainly, mm. what was um, interesting to me was he he was talking about your boat, the mm. the sorry, ship. The uh, <laughs> people hate that. Door. Yeah, the uh, the Jack Door is um, mm. your ship, and he was describing it as being like a second main character. Mm. So it's when you're at sea, you're basically playing as the Jack Door. I don't know, can we? <laughs> <laughs> you don't to do I don't think we can take that guy. <laughs> he's got one of those Jason the Argonaut style like. <laughs> Front bits that talks to you. Sometimes he's got a mermaid on the yeah. Thing. yeah. Oh, I've just got talking a, a, a mermaid. Talking just a jack door. Well, in fact, yeah. there's going to be nothing, nothing fanciful because yeah. they, they said outright we're not doing any of the Hollywood cliches. No, skeleton no pirates. treasure island. No sea monsters. No, no ghost crackers, ships. No fun. Ghost ships for you until the DLC. Until the DLC. <laughs> Wait for the DLC. Um, which yeah, it's just going to be like a realis realistic onset of scurvy and things like that. It's just going to be. <laughs> You've got to eat limes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, where's the lime island? I've got his coconuts. But they're instead they're delving into the stories of of all these uh, legendary pirates, so mm. Blackbeard, Charles Calico Jack. Vane, Charles Vane, Calico Jack, Jack Rackham, um, Horniman. Horn Charles Horniman. Was that his name? Yes. Horn wasn't it Hornigold? No. Hornigold. <laughs> yes. Horniman's someone else. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and Bonnie. And Bonnie. One lady pirate. There we go. You were allowed your your token lady pirates. <laughs> it was, was a like, yeah, society. Yeah, he was, it was like, the first yeah, lady pirates were allowed society, to do whatever they, they like. Yeah. Like, mm, it was a great it was a great time for everyone. Just, just going back to the, the ship mm. uh, thing, I think what he meant by the, the second character thing was that y there will be progression and you'll mm. upgrade your ship and things like that. And I think the, the, it sounds like they've really sort of done mm. a number on the uh, naval combat and boarding is going to be this sort of not scripted event, but you can approach from any angle and you fire the grappling hooks and then it becomes, he described it as like a 3D playground. So mm. there's two ships, the ships are interlocked together. and then you can use your... You can clamber between them and leap around. That was cool. Mm. He was talking about the different ways you can board. So you mm. can just jump across and start killing everyone. You can swim around the back and mm. come up behind people. Uh, you can go across the rigging and try and find a way across there. So yeah. that sounded like really cool. You can sort of play the way that you want to in the boarding. So there's a degree of flexibility there. But one of the things they mentioned is that there's going to be jungle environments, but the free running through trees has been stripped out. Now, they were like, well, this is because Connor was a Native American. He understood mm. the forest or Genetically something. Genetically programmed to climb trees. Or is it just the fact that this was developed before, you know, development started in 2011 <laughs> and they didn't yeah. have time to plug it in? I suspect that's the answer. Maybe, maybe. Mm. So different, different kind of foliage, right? Jungles. Yeah, yeah I guess. Harder to climb. No, because there'd be vines and stuff. Yeah, you should right. be totally like vining <laughs> like through. Tarzaning across. The jungle. Yeah. Yeah. The jungle canopy, like monkeys do it all the time. Yeah. Right? So how hard can it be? Because right. monkeys are stupid. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like you can upgrade your ship into an absolute killing machine. They had, mm. um, I think you start off with four cannons, but as you upgrade that, you can end up with 56, and you've got four swivel guns as well. Mm. And then there was a bunch of uh, new stuff that wasn't in Assassin's Creed 3, like you can drop mines, and um, yeah. you have all the different kinds of shot, the um, chain, uh, shot. chain shot, things like that. So it's, it sounds like, yeah, you can really kind of upgrade. And it sounded like that's the way that parts of the world are locked off, like those yeah, um, big like, men ships. of war kind yeah. of that you can't take on with a kind I, of Yeah, I really ship. like that in that the entire map will be available from the get-go in, mm. in the way mm. they described it. Um, but you won't the, be allowed to approach. Yeah, exactly. They'll have a hundred gun ship that is just completely unbeatable at, at an yeah. early level. And I like that because there's never been a... They don't really do 
boss mm. characters exactly yeah. in mm. Assassin's Creed, and I, I just like the idea of having these these colossal ships that will completely destroy you at the, yeah. lo at the lower levels. And so it sounds like there'll be a few like well-known ships in there as well, like the Golden Hind was Saw one that. of the examples. Yeah. Of. You can't sink <laughs> the Golden <laughs> Hind the golden though, Hind. because they, they're, they're historically accurate. So mm. It said it was a target, on because he's got a spyglass, <laughs> yeah. clearly, with all this yeah. interface stuff. So It's like a Terminator-style eyeglass. Yeah, you know, like, beep, 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 yeah. What cargo has it got? <laughs> this is the Golden Hind. What well, yeah. did you make of the fact that they said one of the new things they're adding is underwater exploration, Yeah, uh, something that Assassin's Creed has never done before um, but they I mean there's this diving bell that is apparently a real piece of technology that Ask pirates Andy about used. <laughs> I don't making your angry face <laughs> no it's it's fine it's fine um, <laughs> No, I, I, yeah, I mean, that's, that's interesting. I don't see how um, it's going to work for underwater exploration because presumably mm. you'll have well, maybe two minutes maximum to hold your breath, yeah. kind of look around a wreck and then have to swim back to the diving bell to I wonder whether once you're breath. inside a wreck, there'll be air pockets within it and you'll have to move It'll be like from, Sonic. Yeah, mm. boop, boop. <laughs> yeah, like a big <laughs> bubble that you stick in. Maybe, but I, I can't think of any other way that you'd have a satisfying... Uh, section of gameplay or whatever. I don't, with a it doesn't have to be fully realistic. Minutes. I mean, it's not realistic to, to free run in exactly the same way as an assassin does. So they could no. extend the two minute, you know, yeah. maybe an average human could hold their breath or a pretty decent. You've got eagle lungs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Eagle lungs. <laughs> Eagle's like lungs are tiny. <laughs> yeah. Porpoise lungs, you know. Sure. Um, but but they've, they've clearly invested a lot of technology in making these underwater wrecks and yeah. you know, swimming animations and things like we that. We saw so. him swimming a bunch, but mostly he wasn't in a diving bell. He was just shirtless, with the, sure. maybe stabbing a shark or You're something. You're complaining? So. <laughs> shirtless and glistening. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he hitched a ride on a shark at one point by that stabbing was amazing, it yeah. and just <laughs> flying off. Oh, harpooning. Yes, is giant whales. Wanted. Giant whale harpooning. That's going to be rad. Yeah, um, that's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. That's cool, because that's probably going to be a way to make loads of money, right? Yeah, Find some whales. haul a whale into the You like, have to process it. Is it like a oh, mini God. game? <laughs> <laughs> Render a whale Maybe Dick style. Blubber yeah. sandwiches for the next four weeks or whatever. All right, so does anyone want to play Devil's Advocate on anything? Like, are they, do you have reservations? I, my only reservation is that they've said that the next-gen versions are going to come out day and date with the with the previous gen version. So they said. And looking at the footage, it was very pretty, but it was very pretty for a current gen game. Yeah. I mean, if you compare it to the stuff we saw at the PS4 announcement, it wasn't anywhere close to that level of sort of post processing and detail and things like that. And I just wonder where they are with the next gen versions and whether it's just going to be a slightly higher res, slightly higher res textures. Then that's version. kind of what launch titles for new consoles are like. I mean, mm. you look at the Xbox 360 launch titles and they they didn't look that much better yeah, than the original Xbox. No, that, that's true. Um, I just, I, I, I wonder whether, I mean, you do tend to, like you say, get sort of first party uh, games looking better, but it felt like, it didn't feel like a, a sort of quantum leap for the, for the Assassin's Creed series. And I think we're going to have to wait until yeah. the, the, the following game before we get a proper sort of full <laughs> next gen. Yeah. But I mean, this, this just feels like an Assassin's Creed game that's just more fun than the previous mm. one. It feels like it's got that kind of sense of, of adventure that yeah. I felt was kind of missing from three, which was tediously historically accurate. Um, <laughs> they have said they want to maintain the historical accuracy, or at the very least, because they, they described it as like an almost the uh, greatest hits of the Assassin's Creed series. Yeah. So they had like, oh, we want the historical events from Assassin's Creed three, and we want the systems from Brotherhood, and we want to reintroduce the kind of approach from any angle assassinations from the first one, which mm. I really like actually, yes. because yeah. yes. the, the scope of those assassinations has narrowed as the series has gone on. I mean, I'm a big fan of Assassin's Creed two, but it was, it, that was where it started to become more about like the story of that mission mm. rather than just giving you this environment uh, and a target. A mini sandbox. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's nice that they're, they're bringing that stuff back. I'd, I'd be interested to know how the <clears throat> um, moving around the world is going to work because he was very keen to stress that you would be kind of sailing your boat from um, ship. island to ship, from island <laughs> to island. Um, so, I mean, is there some kind of ship defence force that's going to tell you off for calling gonna, it a yeah, boat? The Navy, they're going to come <laughs> A boat is what a kid draws where it's like, Mast flag. That's yeah. what it looked like. That's the definition of boat, yeah. right? Isn't okay. a boat? No. Isn't ship a subgenre of <laughs> boat? boat? Along boat with like schooner and yacht. Yeah. Well, this is nautical theory that I don't know anything about. <laughs> so. so please write. Oh, in but uh, uh, multiplayer, no naval right. combat in multiplayer. Because everyone asked about that in like, Assassin's Creed Three, so I was like, yeah. well, surely this is where they do it. Now, well, apparently now's not. the time. No. What I'm interested in is whether they're going to do a kind of trade route type thing, so around the map and all those smaller things. Whether they'll almost do a kind of like elite style trading thing where you go from outpost to outpost selling yeah. things that you 
you plunder from ships. Well, certainly you saw uh, in the spyglass view of the Golden Hind, they had, um, I, don't, I don't know what the cargo was, like clothes mm. and maybe gold mm. or something. Yeah. So you, you take you know, the bit of arbitrage, like take it from mm. where it's least valuable and then yeah. ship it to somewhere. Yeah. There was also a sort of <coughs> anti-piracy. There was also a special item listed on the uh, Golden Hind thing. So presumably Quest there's, item or there's something? like rare stuff yeah. you can find. Yeah, um, yeah. Maybe like equipment upgrades yeah. that you find that way. Oh, the other thing was assembling your crew. Mm. When they talked about coconut islands, they were like, you can go and get marooned pirates uh, and, and kind of bring them into your yeah. jackdaw crew. So presumably you'll have, uh, you know, like a like your assassin squad in the previous games. Mm. Now you're going to have a... Um, a bunch of pirates. A bunch of yeah. pirates, yeah. And they can die and mm. you have to recruit new ones. And yeah, yeah, I think that's, that, would be, that would be pretty cool. So as people who were disappointed in Assassin's Creed 3, do you think this is going to make up for it? Do you think it's lost that kind of po-faced edge at all? Uh, it was going after the sort of fun element, trying to bring that back. Mm. I suspect they did use the word fun several times in the, in the <laughs> Always presentation. Always a good one to throw in. He's so charismatic, <laughs> our new hero. So charismatic. What He's else did they say in the design? In the, in the, it, it was Cocky, like a sort of thought. Brash, yeah, uh, like a brainstorm. Bit of a dick. Might not have said that. But it's a bit of a dick. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I, I guess he's he's supposed to be like a warmer, like a hot, more hot blooded character mm. than Connor. Um, he's basically Connor. pirate Ezio, right? There was a bit in the trailer. He's more of a Ezio. dick than Ezio. Though, he's in bed with a couple of ladies and he's like, well, hey, to the camera. And there is it. that bit where he knifes a dude in the guts and then picks up his woman and carries on walking with her. Like, yeah, and, that's she's like, and she's like, nice. Yeah, <laughs> that's what impresses yeah. a lady. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bit where he brains someone with like a smashed bottle. Yeah. Um, so he's supposed to be a bit of a kind of um, dirty brawler. Uh, so yeah, that could that could work. I mean, out. even or Blackbeard's in a, in awe of him. He's sitting there in the pub telling stories about this <laughs> yeah. other. That pub. felt a bit like fan fiction. Yeah, yeah you it know really when did you've it. invented a character who's so awesome. It's <laughs> like, like Blackbeard times ten. Blackbeard's even like Blackbeard I'm not the best. In even Blackbeard. <laughs> I mean, I know I'm Blackbeard and I'm great, but let me tell you about <laughs> an amazing. He's pirate. talking to his crew, going, "Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's so dreamy as well. Oh, he's, he's charismatic. Amazing. He's handsome." And they're all like, "Come on, boss, <laughs> snap out of it." He's got like four pistols. I want to say four. Yeah, like, they're all do, slotted like, into holsters. Two crossbows on there yeah. and one into the hips. And two, two swords, massive cutlasses. Yeah, just he's covered in armor. Bristling army. with you, weapons. You think he jumps into the sea? You just sink right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. He needs a diving bell. You just went right in the bottom. So. No ghost ships, no sea mm. monsters. Are you going to miss those things? From what? Assassin's Creed 3? <laughs> no, I mean, like, that's, you know, from other mass media pirate sort of I, I don't know. If, it depends how they, they handle everything else, but um, it might be a harder sell, in, in, you know, for Ubisoft mm. um, when they're like, here's a pirate game, but there won't be any of the kind of like cool fantasy pirate surely, like, Memories are like fallible expect. and things like this and these stories... There may have been a Kraken, <laughs> but no. it might just have been Blackbeard. But things like ghost yeah. ships and stuff, that, those will have been oh, stories and fables and things. Yeah. So, you know, if you... Depending yeah. on the memories of the person. Like when sailors thought they were mermaids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's a bit where, like where you make out with a manatee cows. at yeah. some point. <laughs> In the, that'd be great. Yeah, that, that, I mean, I think also you mentioned you could do it as a, a dream sequence because if it's mm. something in in the pirate's own sort of mm. lore, if it's in the stories they tell each other, there's no reason like they, a boozy they wouldn't dream. be thinking. But yeah, so like with the madness of um, King Washington mm. DLC for Assassin's Creed Three, they could do not an alternate history, but a sort of more fanciful fantasy. Or also, thing. I mean, if you're marooned on an island and all mm. you've got to drink is salt water, that sends people crazy as well, yeah. right? Yeah. So, I mean, that's an alternate history where. Krakens existed. So, is that alternate know. history? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, it's maybe. Like Krakens evolved instead of fish. Yeah, all right. Well, that was us discussing Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, and we'll see you next time on Outside Xbox. Bye bye.